So you want to build a solid investment portfolio made up of all ETFs that are not only going to make you money, but save you money by not having to pay insanely high fees to an advisor that will most likely end up costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars in lost returns. But the question is, how do you actually put one together from scratch and feel comfortable with your decisions? In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to create an all ETF portfolio for yourself that you can use in something like a Roth IRA or taxable investment account. Now, I'll also give you a few example portfolios during this video to help give you a starting point. Hey, I'm Jared with two A's and two R's. And on this channel, we talk about investing and financial independence. My dogs, Molly and Cooper would greatly appreciate it if you Hulk smashed that thumbs up button. A benefit of building an all ETF portfolio is when you buy them, you're instantly diversifying your money among however many stocks that ETF holds. It makes the whole process a lot easier than trying to pick a bunch of individual stocks that you hope are winners while also trying to manually diversify your whole portfolio in the process. There's nothing wrong with buying individual stocks. If you know what you're doing, then technically you could kind of build your own ETF that way. An ETF is also great in that it can give you some exposure to a sector that you might not know enough about to feel comfortable picking an individual stock. For example, if you really feel like the gaming industry is going to take off over the next 10 or 20 years, then instead of trying to pick between investing in, we'll say, Nintendo, Apple, Activision, NVIDIA, or Roblox stock, you can just choose a gaming and esports ETF that buys a little bit of everything in that sector. When you create an ETF portfolio, it's good to start with the end in mind. Now by that, I mean what is the goal or the outcome that you're looking for? This is extremely important to know going into the whole process because not only is it going to help you decide what to invest in, but also help prevent you from making very irrational decisions when the stock market is going through something like a correction. Don't think too hard about this though. For most people, it's going to be a pretty simple answer, so we don't need to get all woo-woo and call on some higher power to kind of dig deep inside of our loins just to figure it out. I'd imagine that everyone wants to make the most amount of money possible, but that's too obvious of an answer for this one. To know how to build a portfolio for yourself, you'll want to figure out what exactly you're saving up for. For most, it's going to be retirement. But after that, another goal might be to save up for something like a home purchase, Miley Cyrus tickets, a car purchase, or even college for your kids. To go one step further, you might have a goal of building a dividend-specific portfolio or something like a fun account where you play around picking a bunch of different ETFs. Once you decide on this, one of the topics that we'll touch on in a minute will help you determine the types of investments that you want, you'll want to hold to achieve what your goal is. Keep in mind that you can have multiple investment accounts that serve different goals. Now, I'm someone who likes to separate my retirement accounts from everything else. Because of that, my Roth IRA and 401k is for retirement money only, which means that I have a very long investing time horizon. But I'm also investing slash saving up for a future car, which is a shorter term goal. So I have a separate investment account through M1 Finance for that. I'll have a link in the description to check them out and get a free $30. Once you figure out the goal, then we need to talk about the time horizon or how long until you're actually going to need the money. For retirement, that's most likely going to be 20 plus years away for some of you. If you're going to help pay for your kid's college, then this money might not be needed for another 10 years. Answering this question is going to help determine if you should even be investing this money to save up for that goal, or if the money is safer just sitting in a bank account. The main reason for this comes down to the unknowns in the stock market, because the stock market is basically a casino in the short term. We have no clue if the market is going to go up or down and by how much within the next couple of years. Pick the wrong time and that 10 thousand dollars worth of ETFs that you bought might be cut in half by the time you need the money. Imagine investing some money for three years to save up for a ring so you can propose, only to have the stock market crash at the two year and 11 month mark. Hopefully that person is willing to accept that promise ring that you made from a twist tie that you got from a bag of bread because that's technically all you can afford. But over the long term, we have a pretty good idea of what the stock market is going to do go up. Now this of course isn't guaranteed and the returns that we've seen in the past might not play out the same way going forward. But I'd bet money that something like the S&P 500 is going to be higher in eight years than it is today. Look, I'm not your dad, at least that I know of. And if I am, please have your mom freaking call me. But it, but it is your money. So if you want to invest it for the short term, then go for it. My personal opinion is that if you need the money within a five year period, then it's better served sitting in a savings account. I need to put an asterisk by this though. If you're willing to 
risk it and the date that you'll need the money can be pushed out a little bit if the market is down at that time, then by all means, invest that money. But that decision is going to be based on the level of risk you're comfortable with. Now, this part of investing gets overlooked a lot until it actually becomes a problem. Just like with anything, it's easy to want to take more and more risk when things are going up. But when things come crashing down, every decision that you've made leading up to that point comes into question. This is where choosing an asset allocation is extremely important. A good rule of thumb is that the longer amount of time that you have, the more aggressive you can be to maximize your returns because what happens on, on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week or month-to-month -month basis is irrelevant. Reading the news daily or watching some YouTube channels, no names please, would make you think differently because according to them, the world is on fire 24-7. The further away you are from needing this money and the more risk you're willing to take, the more equity-based investments you can have your money allocated towards. For example, if you're someone who wants to maximize returns to the fullest extent and you could care less about risk, then you'd probably want to hold 100% of your money in stock-based ETFs. I'll have a few example portfolios to show you this sort of thing in just a minute, so hang tight. It's all a big balancing act, and as time goes on, you'll kind of figure out what works best for you. Just keep in mind, higher risk, higher potential returns, medium risk, medium investment returns, and of course, lower risk, lower returns. If you looked at my personal portfolio, you'd probably say that I am taking a very high risk approach to my investments because I hold 100% stock-based ETFs. I'm far enough from needing any of my money, and I've been through enough stock market corrections to where I can handle my portfolio tanking for many years which affords me the ability to hopefully maximize my returns. Your risk tolerance is going to determine how you allocate your money across the portfolio. But when it comes to allocating your money, how many ETFs should you actually hold? Because there's thousands of those things out there. Side note, I did create a video showing you how to pick and analyze an ETF that works best for you, which I'll throw a link to in the description and above my head. The simple answer is that it depends on what you prefer and the types of ETFs that make up that total number. In reality, I could make a case for holding one ETF and I could also make a case for holding six different ones. I'll break the different ETF options that you have into four groups, then I'll briefly touch on a few example portfolios. The first option that you have is a US-based stock market ETF that aims to match the average returns of a certain sector or index within the stock market. This would usually look like an S&P 500 ETF, another index-based ETF, such as one that tracks the Dow Jones or NASDAQ 100, a mid-cap ETF, or even small-cap ETF as well. Then there's index-based ETFs that hold a little bit of everything, so something like a total stock market ETF. The reason why it might be ideal to hold a U.S. stock-based ETF as a large portion of your portfolio is because of how dominant the country is as a whole and the free markets that exist within it. Think about it. There's no other place at this point in time that leads the world in business, technology, investment opportunities, consumption, and growth potential like the United States does. If you believe this will continue, then having more of your money in this type of ETF will be advantageous. But just because the United States is as dominant as it is today, doesn't mean it's going to stay that way forever. Whether it's the Roman Empire, Mongol Empire, or British Empire, history has shown us that one day it won't be the same powerhouse as it is today. Whether that downfall happens in our lifetime or not, it's nearly impossible to know. All we know is that nothing lasts forever. That's why having some exposure to an inter international ETF might make sense for you as an investor. International ETFs essentially hold stocks of businesses that reside out of your home country. Now, my audience is pretty much based in the US, so we're talking about anything outside of America. But we also have to be aware that not all countries operate like the US and that they can hinder the growth of companies which will directly impact the price of their stocks. Over the past couple of years, we've seen the Chinese government mistreat, fine, and even threaten to delist certain companies for not informing them of certain things that they were doing. There's also different economic factors at play within each individual country that will directly impact how well that company will perform. Because of all this, an international ETF might be a little bit more risky and might not perform as well as US stocks in the short term, but it's going to help diversify your overall portfolio so not everything is concentrated into US businesses. Another option would be a fixed income ETF, aka bond ETFs. Now, these are used more when you're trying to preserve your wealth as you get closer to needing the money. If you're someone who is headed into or is already in retirement, then you might not be able to afford 
afford to risk too much money in stock-based ETFs because you need the money to live on right then and there. The returns on these things are next to nothing. So if you're in the wealth accumulation phase of your investing life, then I'd suggest not even touching these or at least limiting the amount of money that you have allocated towards them. Remember that you only have 100% of your pie to allocate towards certain ETFs. The more that you put into something like a bond ETF, the less of a percentage that you'll be able to put into stock-based ETFs, which have a higher upside than the fixed income ETFs. With the last option, I'm going to combine two different types of ETFs together high dividend based ETFs and REIT ETFs. Both of these ETFs are going to be used if you have immediate income needs within your portfolio. Because they'll usually pay you regularly through dividends, you most likely won't see as, as high of returns through price per share increasing like you would in an ETF that mainly holds growth type stocks. If you don't need the residual dividend money for a long period of time, then you'd probably want to avoid these two types of ETFs because they might end up dragging down the overall returns in your portfolio. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few portfolio examples based on different goals and different time frames. Once again, none of this is financial advice. Use this as a starting point to think through how you'd like to create an ETF portfolio of your own. The first portfolio would be for someone who is looking to maximize growth, high risk, high return, that doesn't need the money for 10 plus years and only cares about US-based stock ETFs. This portfolio would consist of 100% in an S&P 500 or total stock market ETF. Now, I created a whole video comparing my two favorites, which I'll link above my head and at the end of this video as well. The next portfolio is for the same type of person that I just mentioned, so they're, they don't need the money for 10 plus years, and they want to add in some international stock exposure. This portfolio would consist of 70% in an S&P 500 or total stock market ETF, and 30% into an international ETF. The next person is someone who is investing for 10 plus years, looking for medium risk, medium reward, and wants to hold both US and international based ETFs as well. That portfolio would look like 60% in an S&P 500 or total stock market ETF, 20% international ETF, and 20% US-based bond ETF. If we're talking about someone who is very conservative, that needs their money within five years, still wants their money to grow a little bit, but wants to preserve some of their money, then an example portfolio would be 60% in an S&P 500 or total stock market ETF, and 20% US-based bond ETF. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button before you go, and leave any questions or comments down below as well, and I'll do my best to answer every single one of them for you. Check out the description for a bunch of different ways to get some free stocks and more investing and financial independence resources. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Done.